Good evening. Here's uh, some uh, of the news making the headlines uh, at the, this hour. 50 new cases of COVID-19 has been recorded since the last update, bringing the total number of cases recorded in Seychelles to 3,616 of the new cases. 14 are foreigners and 36 are Seychellois. They comprised mostly of samples taken on the 17th and 19th of March. Meanwhile, 93 other people have recovered. In general, the reopening of the schools has run smoothly. This was said by the Principal Secretary for Early Childhood, Primary and Secondary Education, Dr. Odile de Comamo, during a press conference this afternoon. The aim of the press conference was to give an update on how the reopening of the schools went and the challenges they faced. We ensured that all regulations uh, put in place uh, were practiced. Um, uh, however, we had a few, a few cases, a few challenges. Um, some of the challenges are the wearing of uh, face masks, especially by uh, students. Um, uh, we just wanted to uh, re-emphasize uh, the need to wear face masks at all, at all times, especially for secondary students and for staff members. And uh, we also had uh, a few cases in a few schools, uh, positive cases, both among students and among uh, teachers. And uh, with, uh, the, in collaboration with health, uh, we managed to um, coordinate uh, contact tracing and to do the necessary to ensure safety um, of all other staff and uh, other students. Um, as we pe prepare for next week, we want to emphasize uh, um, uh, that uh, st uh, parents don't send students to school if they are not feeling well and if there are positive cases in a, a, in a household or people on quarantine. So it's important that we maintain this to ensure safety of all the students. Also related to the COVID-19, some foreign vessels are not allowing stevedores to board their ship if they have not received the second dose of the vaccine against COVID-19. Although local shipping agencies have been organizing vaccination campaigns for the stevedores, only around 200 of the 700 stevedores in the country have so far been vaccinated. Stevedores have therefore expressed their concerns that they will not be able to work while they wait to get the second jab. Today, stevedores could go to the ICS vaccination center to get their vaccine, but only 14 came. The central bank, the SCCI and the Bankers Association have elaborated on the revisions of the private sector relief scheme through credit lines extended to the financial institutions in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Central Bank Governor Carolina Bell says the extension and moratorium are some of the proposals put forward by the private sector mainly in relation to the extension of the scheme up to the end of this year, uh, the moratorium, which we've extended by another six months to reach 18 months, uh, for which the existing clients under those schemes will automatically get these six months. And for those that are coming forward for the first time, they will get 12 months and uh, subject to the realities after the 12 months as to whether they will get this extra. Uh, we've also looked uh, from the perspective of central bank in the flexibility we have uh, to extend the loan facility to the banks because the first leg come from central bank. So we've looked at the maturity, which is currently three years. Uh, the board has approved now for the eight years, which will provide um, that flexibility. Uh, we've also looked at the critical expenditure uh, that is covered. So we've added reskilling and training expense as a new expenditure to be covered. 
Meanwhile, the private sector is still seeking a 100% guarantee by government for loans given to businesses under the private sector relief scheme. It has also proposed the setting up of a credit insurance scheme. The chairman of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Oliver Bastian, says it is mainly small and medium-sized businesses that are having difficulty accessing loans from the scheme because of the guarantee issue. A couple of the com components that we are still in discussion right now is pertaining to the proposal that we put forward in terms of the provision of a 100% guarantee because for various reasons and various rationale that we, we've talked about, um, especially pertaining to the fact that it is a main obstacle for especially the smaller businesses to really come um, to the participating banks um, when they already most probably have their security already in terms of um, secured with other potential facilities like their house, their cars, you know. So it is a challenge for them. It is difficult. So this is one component that we're still talking about with, uh, we're still talking with um, uh, Central Bank and the Ministry of Finance. In addition to that is a, what we call a credit insurance scheme, where again it's looking at how we mitigate the risk for everyone that effectively becomes a win-win solution. Um, and, and so um, there are still ongoing discussions, but um, overall, we, we, we are very, we're very happy with the way the discussions are going. And we do believe that these couple of components that we're still discussing is critical. The Minister for Health, Peggy Vidot, has written to the National Assembly to provide clarifications on the cases of COVID-19 infections at the Northeast Point Home for the Elderly. It follows a request earlier this week by the leader of the opposition in the Nas National Assembly, Sebastian Pillet. The minister said 15 employees and 52 residents have tested positive for COVID-19. Also in today's session, the National Assembly Assembly approved a budget of slightly over 68 million rupees for the agricultural agency and over 240 million rupees for the landscape and waste management agency. President Wevel Romkalawan has extended his heartfelt condolences to the government and the people of Tanzania upon learning of the passing of His Excellency Dr. John Pombe Joseph Magufuli, President of the United Republic of Tanzania. In his message, President Romkalawan states that President Magufuli will be remembered and honored as a foremost statement of modern Africa, a courageous and steadfast leader, a man of conviction with a fierce determination to steer his country towards progress and shared posterity. Thank you for being with us. The news in Creole is at 8. I'll see you then.